Hey everyone, Dr. Baron Greuter here. This video I want to use to discuss some of the um, model alignment uh, workflows we have in the software. So um, the software here, we've imported the CT scan and the first thing it asks us to do is to bring in the patient's STL file. So uh, the software usually historically has done a really good job of automatically stitching, that's the term we use for alignment of the STL file to the patient's DICOM data set, um, but sometimes it doesn't work. So I'm gonna, I haven't even tested this case. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but um, if it doesn't matter, because even if it does work, I'm gonna show you a couple other techniques. Um, I am planning to post this video on YouTube, and if you're watching this video, check at the bottom, you'll see the chapter breakdowns. You can go in the description to find the specific workflow you're looking for. You know, if this is your first time, watch the whole video, but if you're saying, hey, how, do, how did he talk about doing that specific type? Well, look at the bottom and you can find where to go to in this video to find each uh, workflow I'm gonna cover. Uh, I don't even know which workflows I'm gonna cover at the moment, but we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna click on this first. Okay, so I need to find where the actual file is, and right here I've got my uh, mandibular anatomy. This is a, a lower implant case. This is, might not be an implant, it might just be a graft, but I'm preparing to be ready for it, so whatever. Um, click on that and let it bring it in. So first thing it's gonna ask me, is this a mandible or a maxilla? I'm gonna say, yes, it's the mandible. And now uh, it's, gonna tr it's trying to align it itself to the lower arch here. If it's good, it's good. If it's not, well, we'll fail. We'll deal. All right. And now it gives you this warning. Make sure it's stitched. You can always just, um, you know, click this do not show again. That way it never pops up again. But it's a good reminder. Like, hey, don't just assume it worked. You should never assume the alignment's correct. Even if I look down here, it looks, it does look really good. Do not think, oh, well, that must mean it is good. Now we got to check. So let's go up here. We're going to check this view and this view, the first two. Uh, if you're not in this screen, you're, you need to go up to View, Perspectives, Implant Tangential 3, or press the F3 button. All right, so let's click on these little triangles up here. This maximizes this window, and then I can um, wheel throughout the arch to see. I'm just using the wheel of my mouse to see how well it fits, and it's about as good as it gets. When you get into metal restorations, it's not going to be obvious. Um, or this may even be ceramic, but sometimes it... This is a ceramic restoration, it looks pretty good, but when there's metal, there's gonna be some beam hardening and artifacts and whatnot that are gonna cause issues. So, But everywhere else, it looks pretty darn pristine. I'm just kinda of keep cruising through to make sure. And uh, for 99.999% of cases, we're good to go. Okay, so um, great, it worked automatically. Well, let's look at the other view to make sure as well. This view right here. And I like to um, come up from the bottom and just sort of scroll up. And what I should see is that it outlines the teeth well, but also as we continue up, as the teeth cusps disappear, the little green line outlines also disappear at the same time. So if for whatever reason you're not seeing these lines, surfaces there's the hint that's what turns off on and off the line in the two-dimensional views the visible is what turns it off in the 3d view down here on and off all right so anyway it, it, those should automatically be checked but if they're not now you know why okay so this worked but what if it doesn't work so what's the real point of this video i didn't make a video so i can show you that the software can automatically stitch i want to make a video to show you how to do it if it doesn't work okay all right so the, we're going to go over here to model manipulation and up in this area there's alignment okay there's different alignment workflows that we can choose from manual means you're literally just let's click on it for a second you're literally just tipping and rotating, and it's it's totally by eyeball. I'm not gonna lie; there are times when I do this, um, when I have to get it just right. Now I just hit Control Z or the Undo button up here to undo what I just did. Um, but I'm gonna turn this off. So that's that's an option. That's your backup. That's your Hail Mary last resort. If you click on to model, we'll show you what that looks like in a minute. I'm gonna skip that for now. So most of the time we're using the automatic. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna to use two teeth. So let's show you what that one looks like. So if we click on the two teeth button, now we're just going to hold our shift button and we're gonna draw a dot, 
dot, I alternate to each, you can put them wherever you want. But keep in mind, you want to spread these dots out throughout the arch. If you only have, you know, two thirds of, a, of the arch or, you know, quadrant guide, spread it out as much as you can because um, you want to create sort of what we say a tripod. Three dots gives you a tripod, uh, four gives you more. I mean, it's just, we're trying to, all right, so now I need to click on the same teeth over here. They do not have to be in the same spots, just on the same teeth. And, oh, I did every teeth back here. And they don't have to be the same um, order either. I mean, it, it, it's not, yeah, it just sees, okay, there's four dots here, there's four dots there. I don't know why I stopped alternating over here, but whatever. So now I'm going to go ahead and click um, align. And let's see what kind of stitch it gives us. So... For clarification, it doesn't take much work. I mean, or not, not clarification, but to reiterate. And if I needed to go back a point, I can always hit this little back arrow. It deletes one. If I hit the X, it deletes every point. You can see I've got eight points here and eight points there. So this is usually a faster process, but since I gave it eight points, it's almost too many. Not too many, but more than you need. I want to aim for five points. That's my goal. Five points should be more than enough. Um, technically three should be enough, but whatever. All right, looks like it's gonna be a pretty good stitch. And um, I, I don't like the fact that it only shows you this view because it's not exactly the mo the best view to, to evaluate with. So I'm going to um, just say, okay, it worked, and then evaluate it for real out here. Okay, and it's, once again, it's perfect, so. So anyway, that is your, your first backup plan is going to be to go to two teeth. I don't use the scaled, the DICOM, the center, direct, any of these ones. I'm just using automatic two teeth, points, or manual. Okay? So let's go to the next one. Now we're going to go to two points. This is, and I, I'm going to cancel for a second here. You're gonna see why I'm doing this in a minute, but first I need to clear up this scan. There's too much scatter for points to work well. And for how I do that is down here at the bottom, there's a little slider bar and I can slide it. And what it does is it basically says, well, points that are really sort of diffuse, like not real obvious, they're probably not important. So it just kind of deletes them for me. So I've del I kind of cleaned that up now, I actually would like to get rid of the entire maxilla because it's it's getting in the way because I'm going to have to put some dots on anatomic landmarks and the upper arch can be annoying. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the surfaces panel and I'm going to make sure that I am, this is blue, not gray, but blue, that means it's selected. As long as there's separation, I can er eliminate it really quickly and easily. But in this area, there's some fuzz from some metal restorations. So I'm gonna come down here to cut, and I'm gonna hold, well actually, I'm just gonna draw a little loop, a lasso around this and let go. And it's gonna cut out this data set right here. You can always revert it back by uh, restore to defaults, but now that's gone. So now, I could have just you know kept cutting out, cutting out, cutting out more and more, but all I needed to do is create separation because now I can click on uh, make sure that's selected isolate and I'm gonna I want this I don't want anything else so I'm gonna click on this lower jaw and it's going to remove everything that's not touching the jaw it's isolating this jaw so now we've got just the jaw to work with which is great or the mandible so this again this is a, a you know a hell mirror no this isn't a hell mirror this is our kind of our last resort it, it's pretty quick I'm explaining everything so it's taking more time but that's okay now, if I go up to model manipulation and go to points, I'm going to have a cleaner, I'm going to have these two things that I get to mark similar anatomic landmarks. You'll see what that looks like in a moment. But getting the maxilla out of the way or the mandible if we're working on the upper or you know whatever, that's it's important. It's going to help us a great deal. All right. No. All right. And it is nice to have this screen. I'm only using a portion of my monitor, so I'm just gonna manually expand it. I normally would just click on the box up here. But so here we go, we've got these two. 
and we need to find similar anatomic landmarks. And it can be tough at times, but I can see a little wear facet up here. Wear facet. Canine wear facet. Wear facet. Let's get somewhere out in the front. Right in the middle of this tooth, the middle of this tooth. And I like this cuss tip. Right, this cuss tip. Sorry, I had to take a um, talk to someone for a second. All right, so I think I'm back on track. Um, I'd probably to stop here. I would like to get more posterior landmarks, but there's just so much PFM. Hold on a second. All right, and this is the joy of recording videos while um, during the work week. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, these PFM restorations are just you know really impossible to find any good landmarks. Sometimes you can, like these cuss tips might be okay but I'm not even gonna bother. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, um, okay. And I only got four points, but let's see what kind of stitch we get. Hopefully it's awesome, but yeah, you can see it, it moved just the slightest bit, but it's actually, you know, I'm guessing it's probably pretty good. Let's take a look. Again, this is just a, a guess, but down here, up here is where it re really can get to see if it's fitting. Yeah, I mean, it's money. I would, I wouldn't, stress I mean it, it, you're gonna be really threading the needle on an implant case to be worried about this as being a lack uh, a faulty stitch so anyway that worked great so um, that's you know th those that's my third step you know first I go automatic that doesn't work I do matching teeth that doesn't work then I go points okay all right so here is my hell Mary okay so what I want to do is um, go to manual. Now manual, I'm going to just kind of screw some stuff up a little bit just so I can make my life really hard. And then I turn it off and now I'm going to say, all right, manual. Okay. So the easiest way to use manual is actually going to be in a different view. It's going to be in the um, NPR view, which is F5, because now we can move things in just... Um, uh, in three different planes. Okay, so this is tricky. Um, that probably about the only time I ever use this is going to be in the um, denture module when, you know, or not module, but the denture um, denture cases where it's a little trickier. Sometimes I'll edit stitches with this. So I'm kind of eyeballing it now. If you're finding that you're trying to rotate things and it's like spinning too erratically, hold your mouse and pull away from the circle. You're, you're, you're increasing the circumference of the circle that you wrap around. You increase the circumference means that smaller movements are going to make smaller, you know, it's going to be more fine-tuned movements. And so now I can grab this one and say, okay, this is more accurate. And grab the circle and kind of drop it down. And so I can kind of watch down here if I want. I can even use it down here if I want. Um, and... This says, okay, this looks like it's a little bit for, far forward, so I can kind of pull it back a little bit. And now we start looking, and we can slide through the arches. And say, oh, geez, we're way off here. Make sure it's balanced. I don't care that it's, you know, I'm not trying to make it correct. I just want to make sure that it's centered. And you can see this is why this is tedious, because... I think it's just rocked forward, so I'm going to rock it back in this 3D view. And then settle it down. And rock it forward and lift it up a little bit. Like I'm just kind of, it's kind of back and forth. That's why this should be your last resort. This is your Hail Mary. Patient lives two hours away and your scan is, your, your stitch is just not working out quite right. Well, you might have to just accept that this is the best you can get. So let's take a look. I still feel that using this view is the easiest way to actually evaluate. Let's turn off the alignment. And you can see, you know, it's a little bit high there. A little high, not too bad. In the anterior, it's getting better. It's getting decent. This is actually not too bad so far. All right, so you can see where there's gaps. It's not great, but it's decent. So if you're threading the needle, you're gonna go back and keep fine tuning it. If you're like, hey, I got a mile of bone in all directions, I just wanna make my life easier by having a guide, you're probably okay. But now you understand how to do it. So go back to NPR view, press F5, and make some tweaking as necessary.
okay? So in conclusion, what I'm going to do is I will, oh, oh yeah, I will automatically, this is not in conclusion, there's one more part of the video to do the opposing arch. The automatic is my default. Two teeth is my backup. Points is my, okay, I'm going to have to get, do some extra hard lifting here. And Hail Mary, uh, my Hail Mary last resort is manual. So I'm going to go ahead and click automatic to let it just do its thing back to where it was because it was a pretty good stitch automatically on its own. And then um, I'm going to show you how to bring in the opposing arch. Okay. Okay, so we've got a, a well-stitched lower arch. We're ready to bring in that opposing. So there's a couple different ways to do that, but um, you can come up to uh, File, Import, uh, STL Model, or you can literally just drag it and drop it in there. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and do it the, the technical way and say, okay, I want the, the maxillary anatomy to come in. And then I'm going to press OK. Now, I'm actually normally going to just hit X here. It's a maxilla, but it's going to try to automatically align it. I'm going to cancel that. I don't, I don't need it to automatically align because if it automatically aligns, it's going to align to these upper teeth. But in the CT scan, the mouth was open. I want to see it in occlusion. It is super simple. I'm going to come up here to that two model alignment. I click here. Now, there's only another one other model in here. It's the mandible. But if there were other models, they would be listed here. If we were worried, there are ways to use uh, um, points. But that's usually if you've manipulated this model, the, the lower in Mesh Mixer or some other software, then we would use points potentially. But a lot of times you don't even need to do it there. So always try without using points. Just click OK. And there it is. It worked so well, not because it's really sophisticated, but it's because when you scanned these models and whatever scanning software you were using, you did the buckle bite scan. You did the buckle bite scan. So when it generated these models, each model is made up of a bunch of tiny little triangles, and each triangle has three vertices. Each vertice has three coordinates, an X, Y, and a Z. So the X, Y, and the Z of this dot up here is always going to be the same distance away that the X, Y, and Z dot made here because they were generated in the same software. So if that's a little bit too out in the woods, I apologize. I'll leave it at that. I actually have another video out there where I talk about it in more detail, I think. But suffice to say, I don't have to do anything else. Align to model and it's done. Again, it is not aligned with the upper arch, which let's go ahead and restore the defaults. You'll see that the it's not. I mean, here's the upper teeth, but that's okay. I don't need to see the alignment there. I could. I could go back to model manipulation and I could click on, um, you know, a uh, automatic and it would snap it to that but that doesn't help me as far as doing a, a wax up of a lower tooth for an implant plan or something okay so that's it hopefully this video helps you to understand um, if you've gotten that far we've talked about uh, automatic we've talked about two teeth we've talked about points manual alignment and then the use of the two model two model is going to be for the opposing but it's also going to be if you've manipulated a model out in another software and you need to bring it in you've done a wax up you've done something that's going to be your best bet um, if you haven't changed the coordinates of that model the direct the two model without changing the points should snap it right in if you've manipulated those coordinates then you're going to have to use points and do some extra lifting there so okie doke hope this video is enlightening. Uh, make sure you check out my other videos. And I'm, for the first time I'm ever going to say this, make sure you like and subscribe my channel. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't care. But if you do want to see the newest, latest uh, updates, videos as I post them, make sure you do subscribe just so that you'll get them. If not, you can always check back when you're in need of a new video. All right. You have a good one. Oh, yeah. Also, check out my website, baronguiderdds.com. I try to keep these videos sort of organized there so that we can... Uh, it's a little bit easier to look for what you need. All right. Thanks so much. Bye for now.